Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Build. I'm Chris, we're back working on the Lotus Evora. We're working on the front end, the uh, replacement crash structure, the very controversial frame rail extension and our front impact bar. So in this episode, we're gonna work on buttoning those things up and getting them mocked up as well as hopefully we'll get to a point where we can do some radiator mounting and mocking up of the radiator. If we can get that far, then it puts us in a really good position for this weekend being able to test drive the car around the block, at least give it a little spin and get it to a point where we can start putting the body back on. So uh, lots of fun stuff in store. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm sorry if this one comes out short. I spent a lot of time today running around and getting parts and materials and other stuff like that. So it is 10 o'clock, but I will work very, very late and then I'll work all day tomorrow and hopefully we'll get some good stuff out of it. Stay tuned. Alright, to get started, we got our frame rails back from Eric. They are really, really nicely welded up and finished up. Well, uh, Eric went ahead and uh, sanded down the welds for us after he finished welding them all up. So they came out really, really nice. They're a really great fit, super snug, um, and you just give it a little tap with a mallet and they, they go on the rest of the way. So it's, it's a super nice fit and uh, very happy with the way that these turned out. So some of you guys uh, commented or asked and had kind of forgotten how we were planning on, on bonding these to the aluminum uh, front part of the subframe. So we're going to do three bolts, uh, one here, one here, and probably one about here. Depending, there is a hole inside this structure i got to find, and we got to make sure that we don't try and bolt through it. And the bolts are going to go all the way through, both sides. Um, and then that's how we'll hold them on here while we're in the mocking up phase. And then before we finish, we'll take them off one last time and we'll take this orange epoxy stuff. I still have to order it, but we'll take some and then we're gonna put that all inside, wrap it like all the way around and then slide the thing on so there's a nice coating in between and then we'll do our bolts. So it'll be like epoxied and bolted on. Very similar to, for instance, the construction of this part. Epoxy on the inside, bolt going through it to hold it on. So that's the game plan. I gotta get out uh, measuring tape and uh, my brain and measure and drill some holes in both of these so we can throw some bolts across them. So I went ahead and measured up both sides and so far I've drilled out one side. My drill bits are getting pretty worn though. My step, step drill bit is about dead. I've been using uh, this type of uh, step drill bit and it's pretty much toast. So I'm gonna buy some more uh, before tomorrow because this took a, over an hour to do one rail. So I got my holes going through there and I bet if I align the camera up just right, you'll be able to see through. Yep, yeah, there you go. Wait, there you are. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and they came out good. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the bolts uh, through this side, and then I'm going to call it a night, and I'll be back to do the other side tomorrow. All right, so that's just on there hand tight, and uh, that gives me a good judgment of where I can come in. So I'll come in with the cut cutoff blade tomorrow, and I'll cut off the excess over here. That way we don't interfere with any other spacing. And I didn't double check the radiator, but the radiator black brackets came out like over an inch um, when they were on the aluminum. So hopefully we have enough room for that. Anyways, that is it for tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, what's up guys? I'm back and I got new drill bits. So it's time to rock and roll. Alrighty, both of our rails are on and bolted on and in the interest of preciseness, I did this completely backwards. I decided to measure afterwards, but it came out great. So our bubble level is damn near dead center. The car's a little bit uh, this way. So I'm measuring back here on the uh, OG frame rail. So the bubble's just a tiny bit to the right of center. And then when we come all the way out here, we have the bubble in the same spot, just a tiny bit of the right to center. So uh, that's good, and um, next thing we're gonna do is, let me set this aside, 
We're gonna grab this giant two and a half inch pipe, hit the ceiling with it. Um, so this is gonna be cut to size and we're gonna go ahead and gap it into here so it comes off of here like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it widthwise first and then I will cut some notches out of it and hopefully it'll set right on here nicely. Fingers crossed, this is gonna be tough. I gotta measure very, very carefully. Okay, before I've cut anything, I need to make a correction to my previous idea. So I was looking at some of our old parts and so this is a uh, replacement impact bar that I bought uh, from a viewer online when we were thinking about going the uh, aluminum route. And this is how it would bolt up. Roughly like this, okay? About, yeah, an eighth of an inch down or whatever. Uh, so that's where that would sit. Now I wanted to put my, uh, my impact bar higher up. I wanted this tube to kind of notch right in here, almost like in a 45. Well, we can't do that because that raises the actual level of the next piece, which is this that I'm holding right here. Now this is all bent up and we're gonna go ahead and try and repair this. But what this is, is the piece that the front clamshell and I believe the front bumper uh, bolt into. It bolts on, when it's straight, it bolts onto the back of the impact bar inside here. It bolts on right here and then uh, it has some spacers for um, small adjustments and stuff off of that. But it bolts onto the back of the impact bar. So if our impact bar is sitting up higher than the frame rails, higher than the OEM uh, impact bar would have sat, then obviously our mount is gonna sit even higher, our mounting bracket would sit even higher, and we can't do that. So scratch that idea. This thing needs to sit out and down the same amount as this. So this obviously comes out about two inches and uh, it sat under the rail. So that means I need to cut my impact bar to fit on the front like this rather than on top and down like I wanted to. So it's gonna fit on the front like this. I'm gonna cut it to the width of the two rails, the outer width of the two rails, and then I'll cut a slot on the inner width and I'll cut some of the material out so it'll basically mount in flush and hopefully stay perfectly level with these two. And that'll actually be really nice because then we can weld tabs on the inside of this to bolt to our uh, mounting bracket and we can make those tabs a little bit adjustable if we need to uh, gain, gain or lose a little bit of height here. So this is gonna work out great, but it's a little bit of a change from the idea of coming up and down. We're actually gonna be coming straight on like this. Okay, I've got it all figured out. Now it's time to just very, very carefully uh, mark and cut. All right guys, it's time to revise my revision. I was reviewing the footage of me sitting here saying like, I'm gonna take this thing that's supposed to go here and I'm gonna build another one. And then I thought, I started looking at this and I started looking at how many different mounting points there are on this. So there's. Uh, two over here that mounted it to the bottom of the uh, frame rails. There's three right here that I have no idea what they do. There's three right here that mount to the mounting bracket and then there's two up here that mounted it to the frame rail. And I was thinking, man, measuring all those out and everything is gonna be you know, a task and it's gonna be tricky. Or we could just mount this to the car. Um, so I've, I sat here and thought about this for a while and I'm pretty sure it's the route that I wanna take. Um, so here's what I know. I measured these rail extensions to match the OEM spot that this mounted up, where it mounted up by factory. Uh, I believe that their height is right because everything's level off of coming off of here. So I think we're pretty safe to be able to mount this to this. Now there is the dissimilar metal corrosion stuff that uh, everybody loves reminding me about. These are steel right here and these are a little bit raised off of the aluminum. So. Here's the way that this went on the Lotus originally, if you guys don't uh, have a Lotus at home or anything like that, is the aluminum shelf of the other frame rail came out down here, created a, or the aluminum frame rail came out, created a little shelf. This sat in here and a bolt came up from the bottom. Up here, they had a tab that ran off the top of the rail and came out and bolted in on the top here. You can actually see a little kind of triangular uh, outline of where the dirt is. That's where that kind of tab went over. So what we can do is, now our rail is 1 a 16th to 1 8th of an inch higher than the, the frame rail, the stock frame rail because of the metal that we added. So what I can do is I can weld a tab and use two washers and I could mount to that tab here, mount to that tab here, and then we can weld tabs on the bottom into this, weld some tabs that come out. We could even get real cool and tricky and do some like triangular mounting points, hole in the bottom and mount them up to there. After we do that, then I can actually add in a little bit more protection if we want, and we can come in these wings right here, and we can mount into this thing. I have some rib nuts. I could rib nut into here, 
and we can mount into here to add a little bit of extra security, but I would do that after I've mounted the clamshell and made sure everything works. And I don't know, that's a little overkill considering we'd have a tab here and there and here and there, which is what they did factory with a much weaker material. So I think that's the way, the, that's the way I wanna go with this rather than um, using the steel pipe and having to you know measure and calculate so many more mounting points and custom fabricate all the mounting points. This already has them on here. This is what was on the car before. I don't see any reason not to use it. And again, this did not go through the wreck. This is from somebody, uh, a viewer that I bought from him. So actually he gave it to me, thank you very much. Um, I just paid shipping. So I think that's the way I'm gonna go. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out some real, real stocky metal and uh, building these tabs and these mounting points uh, for our aluminum impact bar. Oh yeah, so then the galvanized corrosion issue, we're gonna uh, get around that with paint, uh, paint, or I will put some sort of material between this piece and this piece, which wouldn't be the end of the world, but uh, we could also, I don't, I think a layer of paint would cover it, but we could also just slide any type of little layer of gripping material in between these two pieces and then we won't have that problem. But for the top and the bottom, these are steel, which, come on guys, this is steel going into aluminum and it's all coated anyways. You can see where some of the coatings kind of scratched off, but um, I don't want to hear about it anymore in the comments, so I'm going way too into depth about it, but we can just put some sort of uh, blocker in the middle of these two things. And then for everywhere we're screwing in, it'll be steel to steel. All right, let's get to it. So here's what we created. We got some angle brackets for the bottom and some plate for the top that we're gonna weld onto the top of the rail. So I actually measured um, this impact bar against the damage uh, frame rail that we got sent to us and it actually sits about of a 16th inch uh, or an eighth of an inch above the, um, the stock frame rail. So that means that we have a 16th of an inch here from our frame rail. We can add another 16th of an inch and then we'll add our plate. So we'll, we'll gap out the plate a little bit, put that there, we'll weld that there. Same one goes over here, that's that. First, we're gonna go ahead and drill holes in these so I can make sure that I've got the exact positioning um, and then we'll weld those in there. Same goes with these. Now these weld up flush to the front of the frame rail like this and they sit underneath and they will bolt into the underneath side of this. So you can imagine they're gonna be like that and like that on this side. So next I need to do a lot of measurements and get everything really precise and figure out where I need to drill my holes in all of my brackets before we tack weld them on. That's the top brackets done. They came out great. They line up perfectly. Don't mind the different size bolts in them. I just need to dig through the bolt collection and find the right bolts. But um, they came out great. I did a little bit, of, I, I overlapped the um, impact bar as much as I actually could. So it'll be a little bit more secure even. Um, I really don't want it to rip out of its holes and fly up like it did on mine over here where it just flew off. Uh, so that overlaps quite a bit. And uh, so they're ready to be tacked onto the frame. But first, we have our um, underside pieces. So we're gonna mock up our underside pieces and figure out exactly where we need to drill our holes. And then we will do our drilling. You can see that's where we bolt into right under there. And um, so these will go underneath. We'll mock up, it. We'll mock them up, drill out our holes, um, and then we will get to the welding. All right, I keep fiddling with magnets and different things uh, to try and get it all in place so I can show you the bottom brackets. But let's just skip that for now. 
I have this little spacer and this spaces out my exact measurement from the frame on both sides. So I know exactly where things need to go uh, vertically and horizontally. So I'm just gonna get like this one in place, tack that on there, this one in place, tack that on there. And then I can do the bottom ones uh, correctly. And I'll show you the bottom ones after they're all tacked up. So it's time to weld. Exciting, I'm very excited. And uh, I gotta try and keep the slag down so I don't I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use the welding glove a little bit more to shield the rest of the car uh, so we don't maybe throw as much slag this time. Eric asked me, he said, uh, use the TIG welder to do your uh, tack welds, but I don't think I'm quite there yet with my TIG skills. So I'm gonna use the FlexCore MIG welder. Alright, and just like that, we have our crash bar, our impact bar, mounted. I made one small sixteenth of an inch mistake. I did not line up this bottom bracket horizontally. Uh, it's obviously screwed in, so it's definitely like in the right spot, but it's about a sixteenth of an inch off or, or less, maybe a thirty second. So we'll do a little trimming on that when we're doing cleanup. But other than that, this whole thing is... I don't, I didn't make any mistakes that I know of, but then again, I'm not a great welder, so I'm sure there's a ton of mistakes. Uh, so, moment of truth. Let's grab the level. That's going across our frame. Grab the level. Okay, like I said, we're just a little bit to the right on the bubble. That's where the car is. And we're just a little bit to the right on the frame. So we're matched up. Damn good job. And I have my spacer here. And you can see that there's just a tiny bit of overhang. Just the slightest bit right here. And that matches up over here. And that's kind of how I was measuring the horizontal distance. So when Eric comes by, I'll have him use my TIG welder. And weld these brackets the rest of the way up. And then in the next episode, we will mount the radiator and run radiator pipes and take the car out for a test drive. There's a lot of other stuff to do, but a big thing is mounting the radiator, fill the radiator up, uh, and other good stuff like that. But I'm really excited. We have this thing thrown together. We got brackets and they're good. They're like legit straight. All right guys, that is a wrap for this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching and staying tuned in for that. I'm sorry we didn't get quite as much progress as some people were probably expecting, but it turns out uh, drilling 37 holes in frame extensions takes a long time. But uh, this thing is like, it's put together enough that, um, you know, if it moved, we could crash it now. Like it's, it's ready to be uh, slammed into a wall. Um, thank you guys very much for tuning in. If you like Beast for Build and you like what we do, head over to BeastForBuild.com, scroll down to the shop and pick up some merch. We got Lotus Evora shirts still in stock. We got hats like these. We got key tags. All the proceeds of all that stuff goes directly into this build and funding this build. And thank you guys so much that have all already done that. Um, if you want to find more BS for Build, find us at Facebook, facebook.com slash BS for Build. And we are BS for Build on Instagram. Uh, I think that's about it, guys. I'm very excited for this weekend. We're going to put in a lot of hard work. We're going to get a long ass episode out of it. And I'm hoping that we'll get this car on the road. It's not road legal, so I don't know where we're going to get it, but it's going to roll around so I can verify that it rolls correctly. So stay tuned for that. Check back in next Monday. It'll be the next episode. Thank you guys very much for watching and tuning in. Please remember to hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now's a good time to subscribe. Peace.